most people have some awkward code in their project. Produced by a junior developer, probably with the help of AI, it's hard to read. Probably already passed the code review and it works, but you're finding the design hard to follow. So a little refactoring might go a long way. Today, I'm gonna to work on an example of this kind of code in Java and use my best refactoring techniques to improve it using IntelliJ. Hi, I'm Emily Bate. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. I would like to thank my sponsor, Tuple. They make a tool for remote ensemble and pair programming. A small bootstrapped team of engineers who care deeply about software quality. I've tried Tuple and it worked well. It was really smooth, especially to switch who is typing. It feels great to partner with like-minded people and have Tuple as our first sponsor. If you're looking for a tool to make pair and ensemble programming easier, more effective and fun, check out the link in the show notes. IntelliJ actually has a lot of capabilities for improving code. It does it reliably, and most of the time it makes it easy to follow what it's doing to your design. In this demo, I'm gonna show some fairly poorly designed code. It's from my top code carter, Tennis, the fifth refactoring variant. And I happen to know that ChatGPT played a role in the design when my friend Nitsan Avni came up with this exercise. It's the kind of code that I think a junior developer might well create. So when I read this code, I see an opportunity to extract and name a paragraph, which leads me to create a new domain object, which opens up more options to improve the code further. Let's take a look at the code demo. Tennis game five. Now, this is an interesting one because it's completely different than all the others. Again, we've got a completely different design here with this massive lookup table. It's a classic computer science technique where we're trading off, instead of calculating things every time, we're just gonna look them up instead. We're gonna store them, trading off time and space. So the last part of this method here is looking up um, an entry in the lookup table, and if it finds it, just returns it. Otherwise, we'll throw an exception. So the structure of this method is fairly clear. What's perhaps not clear yet is what this while loop is doing. It took me a little while to work out what this was. It's basically normalizing the number of points to fit into the range which the lookup table covers. So um, I can actually extract this and name it to um, document my understanding there. But when I try and extract a method here, it says, wait, wait, there are several output variables in the selected code block. And the tool is prompting me, we could extract this method if we folded these into a new record type. And it's suggesting that we could call this record result. That's not a good name. Um, so uh, I need a better name. How about players points? That would be a better name for uh, what we've got here. It's because it's the two players uh, number of points they've scored each. And then when I've done the while loop thing, I've normalized them. So I could name the variable then normalize points. And then it suggests to me that the method that I wanted to extract for that part of the code could be called get normalized points, which seems like a good idea. So just looking at what it extracted for me there is that the while loop plus constructing this new record type, I'll just inline that and then rename these variables. P1 and P2 aren't very good. Um, that's the player one points. That's um, the player two points. So that's a nice little method now, get normalized points and um, I just run the tests. Do you like the video so far? Don't forget, subscribe to my channel and like the video. If you're interested in more refactoring demos like this one, do check out my newly published on-demand course, Coding Interview Challenge Practice, which is available now on O'Reilly's learning platform. This demo is included there, along with many more similar practical coding advice. Check it out. There's a link in the show notes. So I've got this new class, players points here. And in this last part of the method, I'm using that to construct a map.entry, which I can use to look up in my lookup table. And then it occurs to me, well, why can't I just look up my normalized points record type in this lookup table? Um, I could use a more domain specific type here than map.entry. So let's see if we can go and fix that. So um, here, instead of map.entry, we want a player's points object, which means I need to update all of these lines of code. 
Uh, with multiple cursors, this is not too difficult because it's all on, on a very regular spacing. So instead I, of a map entry, I can construct a player's points in all those places. And then um, I can look up my normalised points directly in the lookup table. And I don't need this uh, additional map.entry type. Cool, so I'll just run the tests. Everything looks good. Um, and then I think I probably need to extract this whole uh, bit of code into an own method. Um, so uh, create lookup table um, for players points. That's what that does. Um, and it's completely read only this lookup table. OK, bit of clean up, just inline a couple of things there. Um, and then I think I'm done. That's the um, get score method. Hopefully this is more readable than what I started with because it's clear what I do is I normalise the points, I get my lookup table, I look up the normalised points and return the result. And if there wasn't anything in the table for that, then something's gone wrong and I throw an exception. That was Tennis Game 5. When you're working in your production code today, don't forget, alongside all your AI suggestions and your autocomplete, you've got powerful refactoring tools available to you. They can reliably and safely improve your design, make your code easier to understand, easier to read and cheaper to maintain. Happy coding.